SpaceX will fly space tourists on Crew Dragon for space adventures. Up to four people could fly higher than any space tourists in history by 2021. SpaceX just inked its first deal to launch space tourists into orbit on a Crew Dragon spacecraft. The private spaceflight company founded by billionaire Elon Musk has signed an agreement with the U.S. space tourism company Space Adventures to launch up to four passengers on an orbital trip aboard a Crew Dragon space capsule. The mission would last up to five days and could launch as early as late 2021, Space Adventures representatives told Space.com. This historic mission will forge a path to making spaceflight possible for all people who dream of it, and we are pleased to work with the Space Adventures team on the mission," SpaceX President and COO Gwynne Shotwell said in a statement from Space Adventures. Under the agreement, Space Adventures will use a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket and Crew Dragon vehicle to fly up to four passengers to Earth orbit. The trip will not visit the International Space Station. Instead, it will remain in orbit as a free-flying spacecraft. This will provide up to four individuals with the opportunity to break the world altitude record for private citizen spaceflight and see planet Earth the way no one has since the Gemini program, Space Adventures representatives said in the statement. For comparison, the space station orbits the Earth at an average altitude of about 250 miles 400 kilometers. Honoring our combined histories, this Dragon mission will be a special experience and a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, capable of reaching twice the altitude of any prior civilian astronaut mission or space station visitor, said Eric Anderson, chairman of Space Adventures, said in the statement. To date, Space Adventures has arranged eight orbital trips to the International Space Station for seven wealthy customers, Dennis Tito in 2001, South African entrepreneur Mark Shuttleworth in 2002, American entrepreneurs Greg Olson in 2005 and Anousheh Ansari in 2006, Microsoft co-founder Charles Simonyi in 2007 and 2009, computer game developer Richard Garriott in 2008, and Cirque du Soleil founder Guy Liberté in 2009. Down here by my feet is an interesting part of my workstation. Uh, here's where the uh, many of the main, uh, there's windows of course all over the ISS, uh, but this particular window is the window, uh, I believe it's number eight, that I've been using to do my Earth observations. But you'll also notice that in addition to seeing the ground, you can see Soyuz TMA-12. And uh, that's the ship I'll be coming to the Earth in. It's above the window, you'll see the Turk software here running. Uh, this is what I've, this is the way I lie prone here on the floor and get a chance to uh, compare notes with what I see on the Turk software and what I see out the window. It's been an excellent match and uh, other than, other than I'd say uh, the majority of my targets are you know, more than 50%, maybe two thirds of the time I get cloud cover in front of a target, which I think you've expected. And uh, otherwise it's been uh, working great for me. Uh, just behind us, the Voleg will just kind of spin and put the camera facing the uh, the galley area. Uh, one of the things I find really interesting about uh, living here in zero G is how well used all three dimensions of the volume are. And uh, oh, it's too dark over there. It looks like. No, we but, can uh, we can we can see it. Go ahead. That's good. But uh, yeah, but it's it's funny when uh, when all of us are cramped, are sitting around that table, uh, and people need to pass by each other. It's it's very very common to see someone lying on the ceiling, filling a drink container, a few people crammed around the table, somebody sle uh, sneaking by along the floor. Uh, really, all the different surfaces are used as uh, passageways and as storage. Uh, and uh, uh, over the last few days, I've, I've become a reasonably competent flyer, you might say. So it's uh, been good fun. I'm obviously being kept very busy with the schedule that you guys are familiar with. 
but I couldn't do this. I wouldn't have that schedule if it wasn't for you and uh, the folks from Space Adventures and the uh, folks from Energia and the Soup uh, doing a very complex job uh, putting this whole thing together for me, and I really sure do appreciate it very, very much. It's uh, been, been great so far, just the right pace, just to, enough uh, to keep me challenged and yet uh, able to keep up, uh, as well as some of the tools that were created uh, the Turk software uh, with the ASC uh, has been invaluable. I really couldn't have done that without them. Uh, and then, of course, everything from the Challenger Center to the British National Space Center, uh, Nature Conservancy, and all of those other partners we've worked with have been great. Yes. Uh, this is the second time in space. It is. It's, uh, this necklace, it is its second time in space. Uh, this is something I made uh, along with my mother when I was about 11 years old, and it's been uh, permanently attached to my neck ever since. Uh, in fact, the first time I took it off for any length of time was to send with my father there with you uh, on STS-9 on his shuttle flight. And uh, it's uh, put it back on my neck after that, of course, where it's remained until now, where I've uh, brought it up in space with me. So while this is my first flight, it's on its second flight. Those space flights all cost tens of millions of dollars, with Lily Berté's flight costing a reported $35 million for his 11-day trip. The passengers, called spaceflight participants, flew to and from the station on Russian Soyuz space capsules under agreements between Space Adventures and Roscosmos, Russia's space agency. SpaceX or Space Adventures did not announce exact pricing for the Crew Dragon tourist flight, but the cost per seat is expected to be in the same range of other commercial spaceflight opportunities. As for timing, it's likely that the free-flying Crew Dragon flight will launch only after SpaceX begins flying NASA astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Those trips are expected to begin later this year. SpaceX and rival Boeing have multi-billion dollar contracts to fly astronauts on round trips to and from the space station. In 2019, SpaceX performed a successful uncrewed test flight to the station with Crew Dragon, following it up with a launch abort test last month. Hawthorne, this is Dragon. Falcon has placed us in orbit and trajectory looks good. Copy that. We see the same. Time to next Delta V is one hour. The Crew Dragon spacecraft is a reusable space capsule designed to carry up to seven people on trips to and from Earth orbit. SpaceX missions for NASA will launch the capsule on a Falcon 9 rocket, visit the International Space Station for months, then return to Earth for a splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. In December, Boeing launched an uncrewed test flight of its own Starliner capsule, but it failed to reach the space station due to software and communications issues. Boeing and NASA are investigating that flight to determine if another uncrewed flight will be required. Meanwhile, Space Adventures is also working with Roscosmos to fly two space tourists to the International Space Station on a dedicated Soyuz spacecraft in 2021. Roscosmos announced the agreement with Space Adventures last year. Creating unique and previously impossible opportunities for private citizens to experience space is why Space Adventures exists, Anderson said. Since its maiden mission in 2010, no engineering achievement has consistently impressed the industry more than the Dragon – Falcon 9 reusable system. Please hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Thanks for watching.